Hey guys, it's uh, your favorite soft tissue pathologist, uh, Vikram Deshpande, to quickly go over these three soft tissue lesions. The first was a low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. The second is a myxoid liposarcoma. And the third is a myxofibrosarcoma. And as you can tell, they look very, very similar. Now, I will make an open confession to you guys. I have trouble keeping in my head whether it's fibromyxoid or myxofibro. This is how I've learned to do this. A low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma is primarily fibrous, and hence the term fibro comes ahead of the term myxoid, while a myxofibrosarcoma is predominantly myxoid, and hence the term myxo comes before fibro. So that's how I keep in my head these terms myxo and fibro, and I've learned to get them right, and it's taken me several years. This is very typical of a low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma on low power. And what you see is these areas that look more fibrous contrasting abruptly from areas that look a little more myxoid or slightly bluish in appearance. This hypo and hypercellular areas, more fibrous and more myxoid areas with a sharp interface becomes a little more obvious on intermediate power. Notice again this abrupt transition from a more fibrous to a more myxoid phenotype. Also notice that the cells are very bland. In fact, many of these tumors in the past were mistaken for fibromatosis. Now, some low-grade fibromyxoid sarcomas can appear more atypical, more epithelioid, but that is the exception to the rule. The vast majority of low-grade fibromyxoid sarcomas look incredibly bland, as shown in this example. This is one of these tumors that is defined by the presence of a genetic alteration. Nevertheless, if you do not have access to a molecular lab, if you do not have access to fish, no worries at all. The vast, the overwhelming majority of these tumors are diffusely and strongly positive for MUC4 as shown here. And the mimics of a low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma are typically negative. So this is an excellent, excellent stain for the diagnosis of this relatively low-grade sarcoma. Now, while most low-grade fibromyxoid sarcomas look very similar, there's one variant that looks quite different, and that is the so-called hyalinizing spindle cell tumor with giant rosettes. And here are these rosettes. Here they are again, these giant rosettes. Aren't they pretty? They're the prettiest thing you'll ever see. As far as I know, there's nothing in the body. There's no tumor that quite looks like this. Now remember, although it looks somewhat different, these are genetically identical to low-grade fibromyxoid sarcomas. And in a sense, this is just a variant of a low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. Here's another tumor. Areas of it look myxoid. Areas look fibrous with a rather abrupt transition. But this is not a low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. Instead, this is a cellular myxoma, a very close mimic of a low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. Again, notice fibrous areas, myxoid areas. This particular cellular myxoma had these delicate vascular channels. However, as you can see, these cells appear incredibly bland. This is a cellular myxoma, which turns out to be a fairly close mimic of a low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. So when you get a myxoma that looks cellular, throw a MUC4 on it. Here's a very quick summary of the molecular assays used to detect low-grade fibromyxoid sarcomas. Remember, myxomas are negative for FUS rearrangement. In contrast to the previous tumor, the low-grade examples of myxofibrosarcoma are uniformly myxoid. These tumors range in their cellularity from very hypocellular, as in this example, and I've specifically chosen this example to contrast it with a low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. 
These tumors often, but not always, will show these curvilinear vascular channels, although I suspect that feature has been somewhat overemphasized. Again, the emphasis here in this particular presentation is on the low-grade variant. And notice how bland these spindle-shaped cells look. Often, but not always, when you get a resection sample of one of these tumors, you will see areas that are higher grade as shown in this example. Another feature that I have not illustrated is the infiltrative nature of this lesion. This infiltrates subcutaneous fat, and often the surgeon has great difficulty in taking this tumor out with negative margins. This table compares low-grade fibromyxoid sarcomas, key features of this tumor, with the key features of a myxofibrosarcoma. And I'll highlight just two features. One is that this is a tumor of young adults, while myxofibrosarcomas are generally a tumor of older individuals. The other feature that often helps is the location of the tumor. Low-grade fibromyxoid sarcomas are beneath the fascia, while myxofibrosarcomas are invariably in the subcutaneous fat, but above the fascia. The third tumor I thought I'd highlight is a myxoid liposarcoma. And again, deliberately, I've chosen a very low-grade example of this entity. The two characteristic features is, of course, one, the myxoid character of these lesions, but that's not very helpful because there's a whole slew of other myxoid lesions that can look like this. The second feature perhaps is the most characteristic, but you really got to look for it because it can be quite subtle. And here it is, this delicate vascular network, which has been often referred to as a chicken wire network of vascular channels. And here you go. This is far more obvious. Notice these del delicate vascular channels scattered through the tumor. But you will notice that the cells in the background, the neoplastic cells, again look extremely bland. And of course, you're probably asking yourselves, where are the lipoblasts? And I think the lipoblasts are somewhat of an overemphasized feature. Certainly on biopsy material, you may not find a classic lipoblast. This particular example has a fairly typical lipoblast, two vacuoles, and notice most importantly, they're indenting the nucleus. This is of course a higher grade version of a myxoid liposarcoma, almost bordering on the round cell variant, which is a discussion for another day. But again, notice the vascular channels, but this is significantly more atypical than the example I just showed you. This is obviously malignant, and perhaps the previous example was not all that obviously malignant. And in case you're dying for a lipoblast, here's your classic lipoblast. This tumor is, of course, characterized by rearrangements of the DDIT3 gene. But notice again this very promiscuous gene, EWSR1, figures in the fusion as well in a proportion of cases. And all that is left to say is thank you for listening and follow me on Twitter for more examples of these delightful entities. Bye-bye.